Hey, I'm John Randolph. I'm second year MDiv student in Louisville Seminary. For this year's African American Read-In, I'll be reading an excerpt from Dr. Gayrod Wilmore in honor of our new Society of Black Seminarians. Dr. Wilmore writes, Today racism comes in many disguises. It is easy to pick out the sadistic racists from the headlines in the newspapers and on the six o'clock news. Those who beat up the citizens they arrest or burn crosses in changing neighborhoods or who talk about preferring trained monkeys to Negroes in the front office. We don't have to worry about those racists. Rather, it is the racists who don't know that they are racist and call themselves Christian brothers and sisters who set the tender trap. They can turn out to be our most formidable enemies, not always because they hate so much, but because they may love too much. Throughout my own ministry, which has almost always been in an interracial context, I have been most help to discern racism by taking note of the presence or absence of one especially useful criterion. Here it is, the degree of black independence from white control. Interdependence is important, but it has been my experience over years that before there can be authentic interdependence between black and white, there must be black independence, black initiative, and a relative black autonomy. Black independence from white control is the dialectical opposite from the institution of chattel slavery. Black independence from white control is the dialectical opposite from the institution of chattel slavery. It is not always productive and is frequently is rejected by black people themselves, but the extent to which we can plot our own course, make our own mistakes, determine our own destiny as a people who have a history and a cultural vocation is one of the best indexes of the extent to which we are still the victims of white racism in this country, however subtle and covert. Of the two biblical texts that undergird the theme of this conference, the passage from Isaiah 61 speaks most directly to the point I am making now. The one who is anointed by the Spirit of the Lord in Isaiah 61 verses 3 and 4 says those he liberates that they may be called oaks of righteousness. The picture of a great oak tree suggests independence and power, right? We know from the very next verse that these liberated people who shall be like powerful oaks are no wards of benevolent rulers or objects of somebody's charity, but are free and independent creators and builders in their own right. The text makes this clear when it says, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Independence from external and unauthorized control may not be the essence of what we mean by good religion, but it is the essence of true humanity. And it seems clear that good religion, that is authentic biblical faith, cannot bring forth good fruit in human relations if this characteristic of self-determination is missing. Hey, uh, good luck and God bless to all of the students this semester and all of the faculty members. Uh, I'm thankful for this African-American read-in during Black History Month, and it's always important to remember, Black Lives Matter. Be blessed.